so we talked today something about uh, adders. Uh, specifically, we are looking for uh, arithmetic, but uh, one and a half hour is not sufficient to cover all parts of arithmetic. So, I will just give you some flavor, but I talk something more about adders. Okay. Uh, my talk will have some part of introduction, then I will talk about arithmetic as an operations and then types of adders. Then I will look into adder circuit from VLSI point of views see some CMOS implementations and I will give some comments and finally references. Uh, if you see any digital processor, uh, it has uh, what uh, you can say some input output data, it has one memory in it, it has a control block and a data path. So, essentially when you input something, uh, either you load into some kind of temporary memories or some kind of RAMs or ROMs and data is then transferred to some arithmetic block which is essentially is data path and then relocated back into memories and uh, control is through your CPU part. So, essentially uh, we are interested in this part of the uh, lecture only in the data paths. Processors there are many who may be more expert than me. So, typically as I repeat again, uh, you have a arithmetic unit which is normally uh, has a bit slice data path which is which has some adders, multipliers, shifters, comparators and things of that kind. You have memories, RAM, ROM, buffer, shift registers. You have control which is typically FSM which is based on either random logic or PLAs. Then you have controls also is done from timing counters and then of course, you have interconnect switches, arbiters and buses. So, our interest as I say is only right now in this part, some other day maybe we can discuss the last part which is very very important in real life. This is an Intel microprocessor, uh, nothing great to show here, it is Itanium has 6 integer execution units like this and uh, you can see there are some muxes, there is some units which is uh, uh, registers, sums, to cache. So, these are essentially logical units which is carry generation, sum generation. So, arithmetic is most important. A typical bit, sli uh, bit slice design, uh, you have a data in which is registered, passed through adder, shifters and multipliers and you have an output. So, essentially if you see very carefully, uh, even the multiplier part is consist of only adders. So, if I am really looking for a design, I am really looking for a design of an adder in case of CMOS implementation or any, any MOS or Pybular implementations. This is a lecture given somewhere else, so I just copied, so there are many other things there. Uh, this is my Itanium integer data path and you can see whatever I shown here are also shown on the block diagrams and this is roughly 4000 micron of length which is typically few millimeters. Why I brought this slide is since uh, many of you may not be just working on microprocessor based systems, but most of you may be actually working on DSPs, maybe for filtering or maybe for image processing or most of the applications as these days you see uh, trans receivers, whichever you see at the end there is a DSP block. So, I thought uh, when we are actually designing an adder or arithmetic we should also look into what DSP wants because microprocessor adders we know how much what to do and what timings it has. Whereas, DSP is slightly it is a more general purpose, uh, microprocessor more general purpose this is specific and therefore, we will like to see for example, applications of DSP in communication 3G and of course, now 4G may appear, 3G has just come, many other wireless block WCDMA, WLANs and all kinds radars. Then there are a lot of consumer applications, robotics, speech, music, audio, video. So, actual the money right now in VLSI is on the more DSP applications rather than really microprocessors. Intel has itself now almost uh, thought that they are the only people who will make microprocessor. AMD is trying very hard, lost in this quarter a lot of money. So, I am not sure it, uh, what will happen next quarter. Uh, Intel has huge profit this quarter and they have lost. So, this is very happy news for Intel, bad for AMD. So, what exactly we are issues for a DSP? 
There are four things we look into a DSP chip design, which is one is the battery size. If it is a mobile kind of system, what size of power supply you are getting? How much programmability you want to provide? Uh, do you want to speed up an operation by making parallel architectures? And what clock rates one can use, system clocks? So, a design of a arithmetic is essentially governed by what this DSP applications are. Uh, depends on one of the applications, what rates they are talking, what power they have, one can design a different uh, arithmetic for them. So, when I implement a VLSI uh, chip of a DSP system, uh, since there is a complex signal processing is done in DSP operations, uh, most of them are frequency sensitive operations. Uh, we do F F F FIR filters, we do IR filters, we do all filtering in most cases. Essentially, they are more time dependent as uh, time frequency transformations are required. FFTs we do, DCTs we do. So, essentially if you see the algorithms, either they are standard algorithms or maybe ASIC DSPs uh, or it can be nowadays FPGA based reconfigurable ones. So, in all this complex design flow, if you see, uh, if you know the behavioral description, one knows what algorithms you are using, then one can decide the hardware. So, the idea here just to give an introduction to this saying that do not go by only saying I use carry save adder or carry multi, uh, this bypass adder. So, this is better or this is worse. For an application, which adder will give better performance what you are looking for should be actually used. Not just that, uh, you will be saying that uh, there are two things we have to worry about. All VLSI people worry about area delay, essentially speed and power, whereas uh, DSP people more look for programmability. Okay. So, they are two are not same. So, what happens VLSI designs normally are optimal designs. We try to minimize power, we try to improve speed and as small an area as we could. Whereas, DSP since you want a programmability, some part may not be used, some things has to be kept just for case someone needs. So, it is a non-optimal designs. So, when I am designing a chip for a DSP application, it is not same as what I would have designed for a microprocessor. So, this fact has to be brought in mind in real life because otherwise you know you can say oh pick, pick it from the book, this is the adder it goes, may or may not be. Okay, I am not saying it will not be, but depends on a specific applications. Uh, this is a typical system and chip design approach is shown here. You have a system specs then you have system design, chip design, manufacture. This is typical flow of any design. Okay. Uh, we normally go for design which is more structured because it reduces complexity. Uh, we do lot of partitioning so that top down part, top and down parts are separated and show you maybe and we try to reach middle of the path. Example is uh, specs validation algorithm scheduling architecture floor plan is the upper part which is more from the system side and if you see lower side gate sizing, uh, modules, cells, layers, these are VLSI parts. So, when you are designing you should come partly from the top and should come partly come up from the bottom side and meet in between so that you try to get as good a complex circuit done with a better performance from the VLSI and that is the design issues and therefore, uh, this is not true only for adders or any, this is application for everywhere. So, you have to optimize which hardware I have to use for a specific requirement. So, ideally one should not uh, think say if I use the best adder it should do good everywhere, but there is a money part going on. So, many a times larger uh, or better circuits actually cost you hell and therefore, that chip may never be sold because the cost of chip itself may be very high or something non-standard custom design you do, it may be very, very costly for specifications. So, you may still may not be able to actually sell the chip. So, the design is as good as the money you hold. So, <laughs> this is the crux of all designers that they should not get carried away by you know theory or uh, you know someone I, I in the course I will say oh this is very good. This is very good in the context of the last adder I showed or last multiplier I showed but this may not be ideal for your specification. So, never get into an idea that if I know one or two kinds I will be able to because different specifications will require different kinds of architectures and different kinds of hardwares. The major worry with DSP as most people realize is this real time and you are really looking for large throughput 
And uh, of course, one interesting part we shall see later in the case of microprocessors, uh, since the system clock is running at maybe 1.73.4 whatever gigahertz, most of the hardware has to run around that. Okay, and uh, we are we cannot actually tolerate latencies there very much because we are throughput is uh, I mean we have to uh, we have to balance both latency and throughput very strongly. Whereas if you see a DSP structure, maybe one of them I may show. Uh, latency is not very dominant part, we are looking for throughputs that is major worry. So, first thing we define differentiate between a microprocessor and DSP processors as such is there the latency is not is an issue in a microprocessor whereas in the case of DSP latency is hardly an issue okay, where throughput is. Of course, both needs low power any system needs low power as a VLS have man I like to have a lot smaller size of die because it will cost me lower. I should be able to upgrade my design that is most important because once I design if someone just does I do not have to redesign everything. So, it should be field upgradability user end that is most important user should be able to program it. Also it should be customizable in the sense that if the block I see any one tomorrow I must have another standard cell equivalent which I can replace that ok. It should be field testable not only I will test on my side, but I will also give you the whole block you may actually have both hardware as well as software testable. And in, at the end of the day, the time for making that system design should be very low because otherwise it costs you help. So, and finally, of course, it should be modifiable. So, all these criteria should be chosen. This has nothing to do with what I am going to talk now, later. This is just to give an introduction to uh, many of the hardware people who come, uh, maybe like there is a someone said from uh, Bipro or someone because they normally use IPs from somewhere and they fit it and sometimes it works, sometimes it does not just replace the IP and redo it ok. But that is not very ideal, if ideal designers of course, I do not say all we does that please do not get that. Most designers at least the new ones they think that you know if I have this I can this, no it is not true. If you want to optimize something cost wise, performance wise you want to improve then you will have to think twice what you have to do ok. So, these are the issues which any designer of any kind of chip particularly DSP is require many more things you have to worry about. So, there are a Rebe's book which you all hold there are three laws which Rebe has suggested which is what I already stated. The right structure has to be chosen for functional unit before attempting optimizations. The rule 2 says the critical path of the circuit which should be identified and length should be minimized. And the third Rebe's rule is only the number of transistor does not decide circuit size. Interconnects actually design in most cases decide the performance as well as the size. Ok, we may quick skip this just to show you. There are number number systems. Uh, for example, you have a number which is written as x with wd which is written wixi. So, it is like a radix number uh, r to the power i is your word. You have different kinds of arithmetics which you can use in the case of uh, DSP for example. You can use sign magnitude numbers, you can use ones complement number, you can use twos complement numbers, you can use binary offset numbers. So, this is again an issue which arithmetic be used to actually implement an hardware. Generally as I say if you see most systems they use twos complement and you can see from here an example. Uh, if you take uh, addition of two numbers uh, overflow does not matter actually that is very important because otherwise you will have to keep additional this to see overflows. So, it so happens that uh, two's complement actually allows you to do partial sums without much worry on overflows. You can see the example shown here. You can try yourself and verify. There is another system which many of the chip designers use why I am showing I repeatedly telling you that options need not be only from the circuit side options should be also from the algorithm side and from the number side which will make what adders or what kind of multiplications you should use, multipliers you should use. There are of course, uh, three kinds of representation digit codes are known uh, which these are called redundant number system sign digit code SDC canonic sign digit code and online arithmetic just to show you these are the availability for you. Okay. The another system other than digit codes which uses operations which are called residue number systems. Most of the our problems in arithmetic 
is particularly in adders is the carry because unless you generate a carry uh, you do not know next what to add on okay. and this carry generation takes all, all the adders which I will show you is the major worry is the carry. So, we are only looking for carry generation in all adders okay. the other some part is very trivial in fact in most cases it is the carry part which is actually reducing the speed. So, if you make an arithmetic which does not actually do any carry you are faster okay. This system which I shown here is a very old Chinese remainder theorem which uses what is called residue numbers in which carries are never required okay. and therefore, relatively these will be faster. Of course, to generate this residue number itself may be hardware intensive. So, some power may be lost in generating those, but doing that I assure you that the speed certainly can be improved very fast. Just to give an idea uh, we start with some called modulo. I mean modulo is a choice which is basis we choose. So, for example, I choose a base which is 532 maybe 532 then we say the maximum bits uh, data it can store is the product of the 3 that is 5 into 3 into 2 is 30. So, total numbers which this RNS modulo can calculate is up to 30 and I give an example how do I calculate this is just for the additional part I am not saying this is adding anything just to give an idea what actual designers think. Uh, many of us we think that you know since the Rebe has given this I will follow or Shrangen has given it this or many papers have appeared, but actual designers see very differently many things. That is why highest uh, designers a highest paid designer is one which has the highest experience because he has something in mind which others is not documenting itself on a system and therefore, designers experience matters a hell or matters a lot in fact. So, if I see 9 uh, I want to represent 9 in this modulo which is say 5 3 2 all that I do I divide 9 by each of the modulo number divide by 5 divide by 3 and divide by 2. So, if I divide by 5 the residue is 4 if I divide by 3 residue is 0 if I divide by 2 residue is 1. So, I say 9 is represented in RNS as 401 by same logic I can find any number uh, which has represented its residues. Of course, if you choose other modulo it will have different numbers, but for a given modulo these numbers are fixed now. So, I know this number is 27 this number is 26 in residue forms. So, given an example if I do a uh, addition of 9 and 19 9 in the case of is 401 in the case of 19 is 411 if I add them all that I have to add them individual residues 4 plus 4 0 plus 1 1 plus 1 for the modulo this first one is modulo for 5 second for modulo 3 a part of the 3 and third is 2 and if you do it 8 8 by 5 residue 3 1 by 3 residue 1 1 plus 1 2 by 2 is 0. So, you have a number after adding is 310 which in 28 which is equivalent of 28 which is what you are looking for. By same logic you can see the multiplier of 18 3 320301. Now, multiply each number and you will find 400 as the output which is 24. So, this idea was very important and uh, this has helped a lot in speed up, but as I say it depends on the bit size you are using. Uh, so, for a DSP this works very well because you are rec recursive systems and there it works very well, but for a microprocessor no one uses RNS. So, now come to what we are looking for is arithmetic and uh, if you see arithmetic there are two kinds mostly popular bit serial and bit parallel. Uh, all of you are aware and may be expert on that more than me uh, it requires less hardware and therefore, less silicon area. And in the case of bit parallel uh, it is much easier to implement it also looks to be faster because it is parallel processor it is a hi ho hi ho it is off work we go. So, if you have a big task to handle if 10 people lift at a time that task can be handled in one go so that is the idea behind bit parallel. However, this is again a catch in reality ratio of speed in two cases is not very different everyone is telling all the world that parallel processors are faster and here is a objection from my side at least on MOS side. Uh, parallel implementation normally has a long carry chains a long paths propagation paths. Uh, 
area of bit parallel chip will be largely governed by word lengths, how much time it is and both are roughly similar in power dissipations. So, therefore, just to use a serial adder or a serial multiplier or serial this or only parallel may not be the ideal solutions and therefore, you should try to use circuits or uh, designs which are more serious parallel calculations. This has the ideal uh, situations, not every time you will be able to do. In the last of this part I will show you there is this standard carry save adders or some other multipliers. They do use this bit serial bit parallel using pipelines. So, we will show you that that kind of structure essentially is ideal for many applications. Again I repeat this is decided by specs you have if serial bit specs are sufficient for you better go for it if parallel is sufficient go for it. But if you are do not know ideally anything, so you can try the combinations. A typical bit serial adder is very simple. You have a full adder circuit shown here, full adder circuit shown here receives two inputs on x i y i. I can be 1, 2, 1, 4, 8, 16, any numbers, any bits you can have. The it will create some and it will create a carry which will actually be stored on a flip flop or a register and every clock it is returned back as a last carry to do a next operations. And this is how number of bits. So, you need a register on SI, you need a register on CI and you keep doing that operations as many times inputs appear, bits appear and you are finally the register will store your sum and final carry. Of course, that carry itself is the last bit of your sum okay, MSB. Uh, if you want to do a subtractor, all that you did, uh, you put a one of them as C x minus y if you want, put y as complement of that and you can then start doing the same operations. So, mathematically uh, full adders are essentially says x i x or y i x or c i minus 1, i minus 1 is the last carry uh, and the c i which is the new carry generated is actually a majority of x i y i c i minus 1. The I repeat majority gate is 1 in which if the 2 of the 3 is 1, the output is 1. Uh, in the case of bit parallel arithmetic, uh, here is something which we do. We of course, this will come back again. Essentially, what we are now saying that you have S is A, A let us say A and B are input and C 0 is your initial carry. So, S is A x or B x or C 0 and new carry is A dot B A C 0. But this itself can be represented in this format and I think we will come back this little later. Okay, this is because I am going to discuss this anyway. In most uh, applications, you may actually use this kind of hardware for a fixed point integer operations, probably this kind of operations, which is essentially using a serial adder okay, in the operations. So, why serial? So, many operations in uh, you find can be done much easier because there is a data coming at certain rate and therefore, that time is sufficient to go through a bit calculations. Okay, so, this is my introduction. Okay, now, comes to brass tack. Why I give this table? Many books give it, uh, maybe same form. If you see very carefully this table and that is what we want to study this table and based on the study of this table, we will be able to see that we have different adders to design. Okay. Let us look at the first table. Uh, A is 0, B is 0, C i is 0, we see sum is 0 and carry is 0. However, if A is 0, B is 0 and C i is 1, the sum is 1 but carry is 0. So, essentially what did I say that if A and B both are 0, I am going to have no carry. This is my, so this I call delete that means I do not need carry because I know if A is 0 and B is 0, what even if input carry is 0 or 1, the output carry is going to be 0. Okay, so, I do not have to need and that operation I call delete. Okay. If you see the next numbers or other 4 of them, one of the bit is 1. For example, in the case of third, B is 1, A is 0. In this case same, except that in the first case the carry is 0, next case carry is 1. So, in such case I figure out that carry whatever is your C i will be C 0 if any one of the input is 0 or 1. Okay. Take the last next two ones also 1 0 it can if either of the bits are 1 not both then depends on C i the C o will be same. 
Okay, so I also figure out that C i propagates. So first time I saw when a is 0, b is 0, I say I do not need. Second time I say if a and b are different, then I always get whatever input carry will transfer to output. And if you see the last two, which says 1, 1, so it says if the carry is 1, then the output is 1, otherwise uh, even if the carry is 0 or 1, the out carry is always 1. Okay, that is you are always generating the carry. So, if now I figure out that okay, if I see these functions and represent this table in a functional form, then I can implement any additions much faster because I know this procedure. I have figured out okay, this is your full adder and this does this way. Okay. So, using this technique, uh, of course, this is the standard binary adder. I just wrote down what we all these years, our second year student keep telling okay, some, uh, some is A, A x or B x or C i and can be expanded x or functions and C0 can be written as ABBCI, ACI. But what we now want to express is not that form and that is the, the table which I showed, I want to put them into a some kind of expressions. So, I say I need, uh, I can express my sum and carry in three functions P, G and T. So, we say G, uh, the variable G is essentially AB. Okay. We define G as AB we define propagate function p as a x or b and we define the delete function a bar dot b bar. Okay. So, if I use this and go back and see that expression which is this expression, then I can see the sum now is which is function of g and p is nothing but p x or c i. Okay, you can see a x or b is p x or c i. So, that is very simple. Whereas, if you see the carry uh, C0, now we go back and look for the table. If A is 0 and B is 0, which is that means AB is 0, that is G is 0, then P cannot be 0, because if A is 0 and P is uh, this, A x or whatever B you do, both are 0 output is also 0. So, if A, A B is 0, A x or B essentially does not, if that also is 0, so output carry is 0. So, independent of what C i it had, the C 0 goes to 0. That was my first 2 on my table. So, I got delete function. I say, okay, if A and B are 0, both G and P are 0, from the function I see, C is always 0. Fair enough, that table clears it. The next I say, A is 1, B is 0 or opposite of that, either case 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, if I say A x or B exist, that is 0 1 means 1 0 means x or of that means 1, that is P is 1, but a, a, G is always 0, because if A is 0 and B is 1 or B is 0 and A is 1, either case G is always 0. So, if I look at the carry, I always see P is 1, G is 0 and only C i. So, I now got C 0 is always C i as long as p function is 1 and therefore, uh, p function is 1 therefore, g is 0. So, I do not have to worry about once I found out that it is g uh, p is 1, I know it is g is 0. Okay. So, I can directly transfer my carry to the output. And the last of course, was 1 1 in which we say if a is 1 and b is 1, then g is 1 and p has to be 0 then. That is what we said, p has to be 0 because a x or b will be 0. And if that is 0, C 0 is G. So, we are anyway calculated that. So, we know what is generated. Okay. So, essentially you can see the full adder table was represented by these two generate P functions through this C 0 S 0 functions and that is the crux of all adders. So, if we understand that this is what I am going to use, I can have different implementations of adder and I prove that uh, all that I am trying to see that uh, if C i has to propagate, if C i has to not to propagate, if I has to be killed, I will make a decision and making hardware, okay, here I may kill, I may actually allow one, if I pass this, this is the kind of approach I took in design of an adder. Is that okay? Of course, some cases, but particularly look ahead in this, we do define P little differently. It is R gate A plus B rather than X R. Before that we will come. We, as I say, uh, this is very simple. So, the first adder in my list which is shown here is the standard ripple carry adder. 
as the words just ripple carry uh, that means the carry is propagating from each block what it essentially means i have well, let's say four bit adder going on so i have four full adders chosen here the input to these are a0 b0 a1 b1 a2 b2 a3 b3 however when i do first adder i need an input carry because that has to appear and in general 99.99 .99, unless it is a middle part of that any adder system this will be zero because initial carry will come with zero okay, that's initial if it is coming from some other block then it is not initial so in some sense initial carry so many hardware assumes that and does it and saves the time because it knows that initial carry is going to be zero okay that's the trick also many system as we say look ahead carry this is what we'll use that okay, i know initial carries are zeros okay so this is exactly how so you can uh, the point i'm trying to make simple two expressions or three input variables and two expression this actually constitute the operation of a adder and they can be implemented on an hardware to improve your speed of carry that's all that we are doing at the end of the day okay so if we see now unless the carry is generated out of first adder which is to be fed to the second unless the that is available the second operation cannot proceed till the second carry is created third cannot do and on so forth so you can say as if carries are rippling from one adder to other and if they are n such systems you will require n minus 1 times the that much delay always occur because you have nothing else to worry about however the final we can see apart from this n minus 1 that is 4 minus 1 is 3 three carries times uh, plus some time because this final sum is to be created so the total adder time is the final sum time plus 3 please take it the second carry time or third carry time has taken care of addition time anyway that's how it generated the next carry so we don't have to worry about those adder times the c itself is taking care uh, t carry is taking care of that total time available from here to there which assumes all operations in between okay so we say adder operation is very simple it is n minus 1 t carry plus t sum so what is our goal we want to make a very fast data paths essentially we want to reduce the adder time so there are two ways one is somehow you reduce the speed uh, you improve the speed of summer adder itself which we reduce t sum but in reality that time is hardware time is not very very high as we can see later whereas the number of bits may decide the speed because if there are n minus 1 n is 4 3 times n is 8 7 times n is 16 15 times so as n increases the adder speed will go down and that's our major worry in the ripple carry now why people want to still use it this use it because it's very simple to implement whatever functions we see it's much easier for me to put on a cmos okay whatever c and s i have if i see the function i can without thinking i can put complex gates and i have my adder going on so the first ripple carry adder which was available is shown here using a cmos circuit Uh, i remodified my c0 and s0 operations uh, c, s operations in some different form okay this uh, you know i am not able to get bars on this whenever there is a slash appearing before anything it is a bar of that function this is essentially many computers did uh, inputting also required bar of that complements so complement of a plus b plus ci is uh, c0 into that okay so the implementation of this is you can see first let's implement carry so i see a function a b b c i plus a c i oh so if that is your function i say okay here is my function b c i a b this this function essentially is implementing c0 bar this is the bar of this because you know all cmos or nmos or pseudo nmos everyone will give a bar function this has to be understood it will give only a bar function so if i put a b c like this i'll actually get the complement outputs so at x uh, one can see from here that at x 
there is a CO bar and if you want CO you need an inverter. But once you see this you are slightly worrying yourself from the speed side. If you see at this node x there are too much capacitance it is seeing. Okay, how many? There are 6 gates at that node. You can see one, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. So, there are 6 gate input capacitances are coming at node x plus 2 drains a P channel and N channel their drain capacitance to bulk also is coming plus the wire which is shown here is small one but in real life it may be depends on which line I use poly or metal or which line I have there is a sufficient wire capacitance available. So, essentially now you see just to get your C0 not only you put so many transistors you can see huge numbers 3 plus 2 5 10 12 transistors to generate your C0, but you are actually reduce the speed all that you are trying to improve something and here is the device here is the simplest implementation show you that actually it is slowing down. To improve this what you would do you will actually put A, B all this transistor larger size and we know other day when I give you a talk larger size means larger logical effort ok. Simple both G will go high and H will also go higher, capacitance will increase. So, your driving capacitance is higher and your input capacitance is also higher and your current has to be pushed. So, you increase the size and you are lost a lot of effort. So, the time which you thought you will improve by imp increasing the size actually did not ok. So, that is my major worry. So, that means can I not improve speed now ok. It shows that oh I may increase size of n channel p channel and I may improve speed you know you do not actually your logical effort actually is not lower ok. Which essentially now saying that uh, just by improving sizes do not get into feeling that you will improve speeds ok. So, you must change something more. Similarly, if you see a some architecture or some implementation two things both for carry as well as the uh, some part I see if you choose a some way half line where this is appearing the upper part is not same as the lower part. So, it is called non dual something is different above something is different below. In ideal layouts if you if you are a CMS, CMOS person I would prefer every layout to be symmetric ok and as symmetric I make more chances that I get accurate data accurate values of the W and L's. We know in the case of analog today you must have heard from someone that there it is even not only the symmetric, but it should also have a centric ok centric. And if you do not do uh, symmetry on all sides it is unlikely that your mirror may work like mirror it may show you some other ratio and may show other GMs for all your other op amps or other diff amps. So, essentially layout becomes very very difficult if it is different in two sizes. This is also called loading effect we do not probably are you are not aware maybe just to give an idea I, I am a person unfortunately who keeps flipping into different areas in IIT today I am talking of digital part, but today afternoon 5 o'clock I will be teaching course in technology where I am going to talk about uh, oxidation models, resistance model, grid model group and also we will talk about high case ok. So, the problem there we realize that if the size of the uh, transistor layouts are different the etching becomes very difficult it is called layout effects or layout loadings. So, there is a huge variability comes and in lower technologies now that is major worry for us. So, essentially do not go by only what is shown on a circuit when it actually gets implemented you find does not work even half the way you want it ok. And therefore, as much as symmetry you can do you have better chance of getting success. I am not saying it is still guaranteed there are many other problems, but at least there is a more chance of getting correct results. Also you need a, a additional some uh, inverter you can see this is the additional inverter to get S because you are getting S bar. So, you need S. So, you need one or two inverters you just put to get your bar, bar avoided. Also non symmetric logical effort is larger. So, this CMOS static add remember static CMOS is ideal CMOS compared to any other CMOS whatever anyone says ok. 
I mean repeat static CMOS is the ideal CMOS than any other dynamic DVCL or NORA, flipper, whatever people say it cannot beat static as far as its performance is concerned. The only thing it does consumes power and not very fast, okay. but otherwise it is very stable, very robust designs. So, if you are a first starter you should always work on static designs because that will always work even if it does not reach your exact specs it will work. In worst case the actual specs are not available, but in the otherwise you try on dynamic it may never work okay, first timers. So, dynamic circuits are little touchy, uh, tricky and should be handled very carefully. So, I, I thought I should do a static, I tried and I oh, I said no, I am not getting what I want. One of the thing I figured out that anyway I am getting inverters, inverted C 0s and S 0s something. So, why not utilize that itself? Okay. So, I figured out that if I have a full adder and I give their inverted inputs, I get inverted outputs also. Okay. So, I said ok. So, if I already get an inverted, I will use that itself for the next stage anyway using the second inverted stage which is showing you the for example, S bar A B C I is S A bar B bar C I. You can do simple explain expansion and see it is correct. Same is for C 0. So, I say ok this inversion property I can now utilize because I have seen oh I am getting inversion and I am unnecessarily putting inverters, I remove them. So, what I do is I have alternate stages called odd and even cells, odd cells I put inverted ones, even cells I do not put. Okay. So, this exploiting the inversion property is essentially what the next adder is going to do. This is the architecturally shown here, the first one is A 0 B 0, second is A 1 B bar, second is A, 0, A, A 2 B 2, third is A 3 and so on and so forth. Now, this I use as an adder, this thing I utilize now. I know C 0 G P is G plus P C I. I also know sum is P X or C I. This is what we started with. This is the expression we de defined for full adder. So, we wrote them. We need not write here just for showing I wrote that. Okay. So, what did I do? I said okay, here is that carry block. This red one is your carry block. This is summer block. First thing you see the way I have plot, uh, shown there it is very symmetric across this line. If you see this line, what is above is what below exactly below. Okay. So, it is extremely symmetric. So, first worrisome part I got rid of this. I also tried to see that I can improve little bit of speed by actually whatever you want. We have seen that full error table. If g is 1, p is 0, p is 1, g is 0, oh, I know that. Okay. So, I utilize that fact. So, I made a structure which shows for an n channel device you have a b in parallel and c i in series to that and complement of that is a b in parallel and c i in series to that. Okay. Please remember this is not static because in static a b would have gone in series and c would have come in parallel this is not static structure and that is most important though it is a static logic it is not implemented as static that is the trick we used. Okay. Then shunting across I put A B series which would have actually is, you could say that I did that anyway A B series I put, but I put same for P channel and same for N channel symmetry whatever is series there I put series down there. Now, I see this can generate all four possible combinations 0 propagate, 1 propagate, delete what we call kill or generate. Okay. So, you just quickly see from the expression if a and b are 0, a and b are 0, we know a and b are 0 means p is 0, uh, g is 0. So, and p also is 0. So, you do not want anything. So, one can see from here a is 0, b is 0, both this p channel turns on, v d d appears at c 0, okay. v d d appears at c 0, which essentially since you can see from here if a and b are 0. So, okay. so a and b are 0 means p is 0, g is 0. So, no carry is required. So, whatever the last carry it is like a this v d bar this is v d d v d d bar means 
0. So, I have passed 0 to you and no carry is required. So, I killed the carry. Okay. I am passing C0 bar. So, essentially I am not using 0, but I am passing 1 on that. Okay. So, C0 0 I have created. So, I killed it. If say A is 1 and B is 0, which is XR case, that means P is 1, G is 0. Then I say fine, if P is 1 and G is 0, I had to pa pa transfer CI. So, if A is 0, A is 0 means this is on, but B is 1, this is off. A is 0, this is off. B is 1, this is on, but that means whole this series chain is off. However, I now see A is 0 or B is either of them, this line will work. Same way, one of them will work, okay. either of them will work, whichever is 0 that will work. Okay. And now this CI I have input. If CI is 0, this P channel will work, this N channel will block. Okay. So, now VDD will appear which is the 0 part, 0 is propagated. If it would have been CI being 1, this would have been switched off, this would have been switched on. So, this, this path is available from here to here or here to here. So, 0 is pulled out because it, this node is pulled down to 0 and since 0 is complement of 1, so 1 is transferred. So, I have by same logic. I can see if A is 1 and B is 1, this you can see if A is 1 and B is 1, both this transfer turns on independent of left blocks, independent of this blocks, this itself will make it 0 and 0 means complement. So, generated the C, okay, 1 is generated on that. So, I have now a case which I have reduced the number of transistors on this C0 line. You can see now I have how many gates? 1, 2 and 2 other diffusion gate, uh, capacitances, 2 uh, oxide, there is capacitor, no, 4, 4 plus 2. So, I have from 6 I have gone to 4, wire length I cannot change, but the advantage now I get that I generate all 4 functions without actually going for additional hardware for it. Okay. So, this is excellent kill, uh, generate this. You can also do the same operation for some which is nothing or Px or Ci, Ci I just generated the CO0, use that to get uh, output for the next sum. This requires 24 transistors, which is not a small number. Okay. However, logical effort has gone down, okay. that is the trick. Logical effort has gone down because the net load capacitance is not very high. Also, what is the size of these transistors A and B on the right, they can be minimum. So, I will have 2 plus 4 that is 6 by 3. So, I have logical effort of 2 coming from this series arm. So, I have a much smaller logical effort compared to 8 by 3 or 3 times what earlier I had. I have reduced my logical effort, I reduced my h and therefore, I have improved my delay part. So, this will be a faster less transistor circuits than the last one. So, you can think how a VLSI person thinks from the same logic. So, this is exactly what I say when you design, your ideas should not come from the only expressions, but you should start thinking what logical effort you are getting and <coughs> correspondingly choose your function so that logical effort is also minimized. Okay, by the way, before I quit, uh, I think many of these slides or rather most of these slides have been taken from Rebe's course website. Okay, so, here is the implementation. You can see it is very symmetric across. Nowhere there are bends, nowhere there are additional lengths coming. Of course, this C0 which is going here normally is on second metal to reduce the wire capacitance. Okay. If you have single metal, then I mean you still have single metal, but then this should be the other metal side. Normally, if you have multi metal uh, technology which is 6 metal, a 7 metal these days, this is very easy to implement. So, in nutshell, the adder which I showed was called mirror adder. Mirror in the sense, what is above, if you flip down, it exactly mirrors. Okay. Whatever is P, you make it N and it mirrors. Okay. The N mass and P mass chain are completely symmetrical. A maximum of 2, that is what I said. Maximum of 2, everywhere I have only 2 transistors except this last part. Yeah, normally logical effort is coming from only two transistor parts. Okay. At least in carry case, only two transistors, 
that is logical effort goes down. Please take it. We have said other day as many series transistor you will have that much logical effort will increase. Number of input increases logical effort will go n to n plus 1 or n plus 2 times whatever the way n number increases. So, we reduce that number. So, and by doing this not only we reduce the number we also provided all four possibilities with time saving which does not have to go full expression in if it is so it calculates from here if it is so it calculates from here if it is so it automatically saves the time of four separate calculations depends on input you have ok that is the trick of the trade. When laying out the cell most critical issue is the minimization capacity and node C reduction or diffusion capacity particularly very important. The capacitor node 0 is composed of 4 diffusion capacitances, 2 internal gate capacitances, 6 gate capacitances in a total adder cell okay, which is less than the earlier what we showed about ripple carry. The transistor connected to CI are placed close achha. another interesting thing which may be uh, many of you are aware but still I may stress. Uh, I think Professor Sharma must have talked this is very important in every design that uh, we should look for. Uh, something called critical paths. Critical path is defined by that input which comes last because that is going to limit the final speed. If that uh, one input of out of four or three is coming the last, it will uh, the output will be decided when that appears. That's the critical. So it is always suggested that in most cases the critical path should be close to the output. Okay, the critical path transistor should be close to the output. The reason can be you can see from here. Since these both are close to the output, you can see from here even if this is the last coming because it may come from the last stage, this may be this is first stage but you have n stages, this may come from the last stage and it may not this A and B will be available to day 1, P0, G0, P1, P2 they can be calculated independent of C because it is a function which is only function of A and B. So, you can calculate them immediately A and B are known to you for the next stage, all bits are known to me. So, A and B's are known to me, but C I do not know because C I have to get ok. So, I see if you see A and B, A and B here simple case, if both A and B are one per se, so I have already settled uh, or say A and B are one here. So, I have settled this, but I have yet to settle on this because C I has not come. If C I would have been lower, the upper two also I mean A and B input they also cannot be evaluated because there is no ground for them because if C i is below that, that they it cannot provide you ground for it. So, even if they want to discharge because their inputs were 1, they are not able to discharge because there is no ground path for it. In this specific case, it is not so very true, but otherwise. So, what we do normally the path which is closest to critical should be let us say that means this is already settled out, ground is provided A and B 1 let us say. So, whenever this comes immediately grounding path is provided to you. So, in all cases the critical path uh, transistor uh, critical input transistor should be closest to the output which will reduce the average delay for you ok and that is one trick which is not just for here everywhere. So, we put that uh, I mean we put it means the way it has it is automatically come ok. Only the transistor in the carry stage have to be optimized for optimal speed all transistor in some stage can be minimal size because some is essentially is coming from once the carry has come till the next carry comes you have enough time to coming ok. So, in some sense the limit is not coming from some part. So, they can be anyway at the lowest transistors carry takes time. So, ok that you do some better technique. So, that carry is better.